It was a celebration of the life and service of Reverend C. Herbert Oliver here at the church where he pastored at Bedford Central Presbyterian Church in Brooklyn. I think Reverend Oliver was just an incredibly brave, brave man. And he incorporated the entire community, whether it be here in Brooklyn or in Birmingham or earlier in Maine, in all his work. And later on in life, he worked to share what his work with young people today. And I see my students when they speak with Claude and hear of his father's work, truly inspired to go out and make the world a better place. Mike Pavlis, a teacher at Brooklyn East Collegiate Charter School, was among those gathered here at Bedford Central Presbyterian to remember the life of civil rights leader and pastor of Westminster Bethany Presbyterian Church, Reverend C. Herbert Oliver, who died at the age of 96 on November 30th after suffering from respiratory complications. He was my childhood pastor. Um, to this day, I, even in my marriage today, I wanted him to do marriage counseling with me. He was just a man that I admired from five years old up until present, so he's truly going to be missed. He was, he was an awesome pastor. An awesome pastor who went the distance when it came to ending segregation long before his work would take him to Brooklyn. Soon after graduating from Wheaton College in Illinois and returning to Birmingham, he was arrested in 1948 for hosting an interracial meeting that was aimed at addressing an uptick in race-based violence. He was soon offered the role of pastor at an Orthodox Presbyterian church in Maine, where he moved with his family and lived for about seven years before returning to Birmingham, where from 1960 to 65, he collaborated with a group of black ministers in documenting close to 100 cases of alleged police brutality in a publication called Inter-Citizens Committee, with their work featured in several New York Times articles that looked at the growing unrest in that town. It was this and the work of lifelong friend Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth that would eventually pave the way for Dr. King to visit Birmingham. Uncle Harper just maybe two years ago told me he his niece, Terry Oliver Crabb from Philadelphia, Lois Benjamin from Chicago, and Carol Brown from Birmingham, also there to pay tribute. How would you like um, your uncle to be remembered here today? Oh, as a hero, as a um, one of the precious um, parts of our history. He was an awesome orator, and he did so much for the communities, even being with Reverend Shuttlesworth and Martin Luther King, I'm just so proud of him. <laughs> In 1965, he moved to Brooklyn and would serve as pastor at Bedford Central Presbyterian before moving to Westminster Bethany in 1966, where he worked until retiring in 92. In 1967 to 70, he was elected to a school board that was later disbanded in controversy as he worked to improve educational outcomes for children in the mostly black district. After retiring, Reverend Oliver remained active by holding various supportive roles in his denomination and as chaplain of the Veterans Affairs Hospital in Manhattan. He also was invited to speak at schools and colleges and was a guest on BronxNet television. With all this, Eric Tudos remembers him as someone who guided and listened to him as a teen. I first met Reverend Oliver as a youngster in the Youth Connection. He was very involved with the church. He is survived by his wife, Lorna Silvera Oliver, his children, Claude Oliver, who is the oldest, and Patrice Oliver from his first wife, Ruby King Oliver, and his grandson, Paul Oliver Jr., the son of Paul Oliver, who passed away in 2000. The evening marks an end of an era, but one that will not be forgotten. Here in Brooklyn, Arlene Makoko for BronxNet.